Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the latest instalment of the uh, Humanities and Social Science Virtually Their Days here in a sunny Oxford Brooks University. Today, or this afternoon rather, the focus is on law, and I'm joined here by um, a couple of our lecturers and a number of our esteemed students. My name's Joe, I'm going to be presenting, and these uh, academics and students are going to introduce themselves shortly. But before they do, please bear in mind that you can ask the questions here. Uh, you can do that just to the right of the screen um, by uh, entering your questions into the social stream and chat function and we will ask them to our academics. Um, also, please bear in mind that if you have any admissions-related questions, please direct them to the admissions chat, which is currently going on now until 4.30. We're here for the next 30 minutes to ask your questions, so please start sending them in. Any course-related questions or any questions about student life, we will be happy to answer. Before my guests introduce themselves, uh, I'm just going to get Mark uh, over there to uh, briefly introduce the Law Department. Yeah, the School of Law is part of the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences, most of our students are undergraduates um, studying um, straight law. Some of our students are postgraduates. We've got master's courses, and a number of our students go on to do doctoral studies as well. Excellent. So without further ado, uh, they're going to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm a first-year law student. Hi, I'm Nisha, and I'm also a first-year law student. Hi, I'm Lucy Vickers, and I'm a professor of law in the law department. Hi, I'm Jack, and I'm also a first-year law student. And I'm Mark. I'm one of the principal lecturers. Perfect. So without further ado, we'll start with the questions. And the first one's directed to uh, Mark. And the question is, what are the things that make law at Oxford Brooks different to similar courses at other universities in the UK? Well, I think what, what makes Brooks distinctive is that, in fact, it's, that it's a small and friendly department. Um, it's a research-led department. There's a lot of focus on interaction with our students, and, and we get to know our students um, very well. We work within sort of good small groups. And although a lot of our students are having to follow parts of the course which they have to do to go on and qualify as solicitors or barristers, there's a lot of options as well and a lot of our colleagues who are involved in research in particular areas feed those into those specialist options. Excellent. Um, how flexible is the course in terms of mandatory and optional modules? Well, I mean, most, most of the students who start with us, and they, they, arrive, they arrive in their first year and they, they do have in mind the idea of going on to being barristers or solicitors. If they're going to do that, there are certain subjects they just have to study as part of their um, pr potential professional qualifications, so they'll have to do criminal law and property law and contract law and, and so on. Um, but the flexibility really kicks in towards the end of the second year and into the third year, and, and then they can start doing all kinds of options um, from commercial law through to something called commu communication skills for lawyers, which allow, allow them to develop their interests and their skills. How do you help the students to decide um, whether to go down a specific route or whether to keep the, their options more broad? Well, I mean, there are, there are a number of ways in which the students can actually specialise because we have, um, in addition to the, the law degree, um, we're now introducing um, specialist law degrees in commercial law and criminal law, and those are options which themselves um, can, can, can allow you to specialise in a particular type of degree. In terms of what areas and, and specialist subjects people want to do, I think what really matters is what the students want to do. And then what we try to do uh, is encourage the students to think about where they want their legal studies to take them. And if they think that they would really want to be a commercial lawyer in the future, then we strongly encourage them to think about doing things like commercial law, company law, take those options to really help them make, uh, become more employable. If, on the other hand, they think they want to be a sort of criminal lawyer or a family lawyer, um, we would encourage them to do uh, subjects like criminal evidence and family law. It's whatever helps the students you know, become more employable and what is that in the end a competitive market. You mentioned there um, a few uh, career options. We're going to come to those a bit later in our discussion, but I'm going to um, flip over to Lucy. Uh, and my question is still on the uh, around the course, and it's the difference between coursework and exams, the ratio of um, how they uh, balance out and the forms of assessment for students. Yeah. Well, we, we assess our courses in a variety of ways. So some of them are, um, generally, they're, they're a mixture of coursework and exam. Um, some of our courses are 100% exam, many of them are 100% coursework, and others are, are the mix, sometimes 50-50, sometimes 25-75, so it does vary. Um, sometimes um, the students will um, be assessed as well, even if it's an exam, we have some seen exams, so that's a little bit like taking um, controlled assessments which students might have taken at school, where we give them the exam questions in advance, and obviously they assess them during with exam conditions in a, in a time-controlled um, environment. We also have coursework that might be essays, it might be presentations, so there's quite a variety even within coursework exam um, of different types of assessment. Excellent. Um, obviously with uh, a subject like law there may be quite a lot of terminology that may be unfamiliar, so I'm going to pick one of these words now. Can you explain the meaning of mooting? Ah. 
Um, oh. to Mark. <laughs> it's a bit like dry slope skiing for lawyers, really. And what, 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 what we've got, we've got this um, the classic way of teaching courtroom skills, you know, how you present a case in, in front in front of a court, um, is is done in what's called what are called moot courts. And so, what we typically have, um, we have you know, you'll have a judge, and we, we we use a lot of local lawyers and, and local judges to come in and, and act as judges in our moot court. We've got a, a, a special um, moot court which is actually specially designed. And we actually, got the furniture in it is from an old disused courtroom. So they, they, they decommissioned a courtroom in London and we acquired the furniture and we acquired the press. So, so it really is, it's a very realistic environment. Um, and the students, what they have to do in the course of mooting is they have to pretend they're in the, the Court of Appeal of the Supreme Court. And they're arguing in teams of two, a point of law. So really two, team, uh, two students on one side, two students on the other side, arguing a point of law in front of a judge. Now, that's a fantastic way of learning presentation skills. We have huge opportunities for our students to get involved in that. We, we're trying to, we try to encourage maximum participation because it is, you know, in, in principle, open to every single student within the whole school of law. Um, we have training sessions. We have internal competitions, and the students who um, do well in our internal competitions go on to represent the university in national and international competitions. Um, in recent years, our students—I mean, we've got a fantastic cohort of students, and our students have um, won a number of. Um, national competitions and have gone on to international success. Um, the competitions that they won, that we've twice won the Inner Temple InterVarsity Mooting Competition, um, we've won the um, ESU Essex Court Mooting Competition, which is a big national competition for students from all over the country. Um, and a couple of years ago, our students um, won the Commonwealth Mooting Competition representing the United Kingdom. So that, you know, I think that the opportunities to do mo mooting here are considerable. And you say um, that there is a national, a positive national reputation gained by students who come to Brooks because of the services such as Mooting that you offer. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think that what's happening, and, and I, I do quite a lot of work with the professions, uh, both at both the bar and the solicitors' profession, and I think what I've noticed is that you know, our success and the success of our students in the Mooting competitions and in other competitions such as the client interviewing competition is really gaining the school of law recognition, but crucially, it's uh, ma making people realise just how talented and employable our graduates are. And that's really having a benefit for our students. Can I jump in and say something, actually? Certainly. Um, I did Mooton in my first year, and I have to recommend it to absolutely anybody. It, I think what puts a lot of people off first is the fact that it seems quite scary. I mean, you have to stand up and be all formal, have lots of difficult terminology to get your head around. But I wholeheartedly endorse Get Involved, because it's fantastic. You you don't realise just how much work you have to do for it, but it doesn't feel laborious. You do the work and you enjoy doing it. And it is terrifying. You feel your legs shaking and your <laughs> mouth goes so dry when you stand up and have to present your legal arguments. But I tell you something, it's fantastic fun. So yeah, 100%. If you want to, uh, or shouldn't be a choice, I think everybody should have to do it because I think it's invaluable. So yeah. Top credit for that. The questions are flooding in. I'm going to ask one, I think, is for it's, uh, an academic to answer. So, Lucy, if you could have a go at answering this. It is, if I don't get the grades for law, will I automatically be rejected from the course despite my fear of exams, but passion for law and dedication for studying here? I would say um, it, it wouldn't be an automatic that you'd be rejected if you don't uh, meet the grades. It depends by how far you drop them. But certainly um, on the day that the results come out, phone us and speak to us, whatever the results are. If, you've got, if you're holding an offer and you miss it, um, then then give us a ring and we'll be able to talk to you about it at that stage. But certainly don't be put off from phoning us on in the days that follow the exams. Awesome. <coughs> uh, could I just add to that? that the, the passion and dedication to law is, is something that we really value. You know, we, we really love it when we see it in our students. We like it in our prospective students. And of course, it's something that employers really want. You know, they, they really like the, the, the graduates who come out really committed to a particular area of law. Excellent. Um, another question now I'm going to direct to the uh, two students here who have been sitting very quietly and well behaved. Uh, the question is, someone says, should I have done law A-level to get an advantage? Uh, I was talking about this earlier, actually. Um, it's not necessary at all, I don't think. I took A-level law. Uh, I found it was a nice footing to have because you understand some of the some of the like language that's used, but not necessary at all. <coughs> Most of my friends that I'm studying with now didn't take A-level law and it hasn't put them at a disadvantage at all. And there's another sort of follow-up question. Um, have there been, I know you're only in your first year, but so far have there been a lot of opportunities so far to get good contacts with law firms for future training contracts, etc. Jack's nodding. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. I think the law of fair. Yeah. Um, organized by Mark is definitely a great way. Do you want to expand on the law of fair? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's something that we're, we're very pleased about. Um, I think part of the reputation of Brooks is that now we've got firms coming to Brooks to recruit our graduates. Um, and what we had this year um, in, in the new building um, had the Oxford Brooks University Law Fair, which was building on a, a slightly smaller predecessor we, we had in pre previous years. That's going to be repeated uh, again this November. And what it is, it's um, we had a whole range of firms and barristers' chambers, actually, so it's solicitors and barristers coming along, um, and we had everything from criminal law firms through to commercial law firms, barristers specialising in sort of family law, civil law, and criminal law coming along. Uh, and the event took place in, on, in a terrace building, which is part of the uh, new building. And what was really interesting about it was that the firms were coming along because you know, they were looking to recruit our students. They want, they want, they wanted to introduce themselves to our students. What was nice was that a lot of the firms, um, obviously they were sending along partners and people in charge of recruitment and things, but they're also sending along um, Brooks graduates as, as part of the team who, who were there. And it was very nice to see a lot of our old students coming back. But I think that's a, that's a real measure of how employers are interested. I'm very happy you've said that because you've just answered the next question, I think. Uh, someone, one of you uh, has questioned, uh, even though Oxford Brooks is not a Russell Group University, does it have the reputation that is wanted by top law firms? I think you've just answered that. Uh, it absolutely does, by the sounds of things. I, I think it is. I, mean, I, I, I um, was a solicitor in practice before I came here, and I, I trained um, uh, in an international commercial law firm. Um, and I still have very close connections with the profession, and, and I, I can honestly say that I think that the firms really do want our graduates. And I think the fact that we, we give so much emphasis to lawyer skills, and we're doing so well on a national and international level in terms of the skills-related areas, I think is helping um, uh, employers recognise just how good our graduates are. Excellent. Um, back to the students. I might put you on the spot here a little bit, but could you <laughs> speak very briefly about when you decided I want to do law, why you chose to come to Oxford Brooks? Go ahead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my decision to do law was <clears throat> not quite like a last minute decision. I don't come from a law family, and um, but people just told me to kind of have a look at it. I had a look at it and came and saw the university and kind of immediately fell in love with it. It's like, it's so friendly. Everyone in the open day was so nice. And you saw the campus and how nice Oxford is as a city and it's so close to everything. Um, and just, the, I think the whole thing, it's just it's a really nice experience. Mm. I mean, for me, most of my interest in law came from studying at A-level. I was just really, really enjoyed it. So I thought I was originally gonna take a different course. And then when somebody advised me, take something that you'll love, take something you'll really enjoy and that you're interested in. Um, so that's what directed me towards law. And then when I came to Brooks, like as Nisha was saying, it's a really friendly environment. The campus setup is so nice. Most of the law is taught um, in Headington, which is really close to the halls and it's really, you know, all contained. But again, it's so close to the town centre, so it's everything's right there. So that's really what attracted me. Um, I w had no idea what I was going to study at university um, until my head of sixth form said, you're quite argumentative and you do like to show <laughs> off. And I think if you're argumentative and you quite like showing off, then I think really consider doing law because <laughs> it's suited me down to the ground. And I honestly would not have chosen to do anything else. And I'm so pleased that, well, it was here for me to be able to do. So, yeah. Three brilliant <coughs> answers there. Excellent. Another question for the students, uh, a question that's just come in about work experience opportunities. Um, it's a question really I'm going to open up. What kind of work experience opportunities do people have while they do law at Brooks? That's a really well-timed question, if I, if, I, if I can answer it. Um, one of my colleagues um, recently set up a mentoring scheme with Barristers Chambers, which uh, allows um, students to go and have a mentor in, in, in a set of chambers who can actually provide them with sort of general guidance and obviously go and have meetings, gives, give them sort of um, careers and employability support. Um, and um, what's going to happen for next academic year is that we're going to be extending that out um, to a solicitor's mentoring scheme, uh, and that's going to be that's going to be launched um, in the next academic year. And the idea behind having that mentoring scheme um, is that it should be open to all our students. So we're looking at something quite large scale. Excellent. I can feel the excitement <laughs> from, the, from the students who are going to experience that. Jack, um, I personally, I've been able to secure some work experience for a law firm this summer. Um, I think that came from being confident enough to be able to approach a law firm and sort of get the contact details and. I guess learn how the whole process works and thanks to the law fair as well 
I'm still waiting to find out if I've been able or been successful in obtaining work experience in a local Oxford firm as well. I mean, you have to bear in mind that the application process and when they assess everything, it takes ages, but don't be disheartened if you don't hear something straight away. But yeah, it's fantastic. Going away um, just for a moment from the degree itself and more about life as a student at Oxford Brooks, um, one of you, maybe Nisha, if you can answer this, what is it like to be a student in the city of Oxford? Um, I think it's it's really good. There's great clubs, there's such a nice pub scene. Um, everything's so close to you. It's a really, really nice city to be in. And it's kind of got everything a big city has, but just on a smaller scale. Mm. So I think it's perfect for students. It's so There's so many students, but it's a family place as well. So it's really safe and you don't feel kind of, you never feel intimidated or you can walk home from clubs, walk to the pub together. It's never very scary. <laughs> what kind of services, um, maybe Jack, what kind of services do the uh, university put on to keep students um, safe and well while they're at university? Oh, uh, they provide, well, I suppose that's more focused at the, the student union. Is that what you're sort of aiming at? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I had to cl uh, clarify. Well, the student union, I think they're starting to be much more active and putting on events which are local to the university itself rather than having to go elsewhere. So I think the students union, if you get involved, and I think that's the key, you have to be willing to get yourself involved with things. And there's, there's plenty of activities on, such as, uh, I just know, top of my head, on, this, on a Sunday, they have a cinema screening every Sunday, so it's things such as that. They have the safety bus as well, yeah. so I was oh, thinking, okay. thinking of the safety <laughs> aspect. Glad you mentioned that. <laughs> Tell us about the safety bus, haven't you? I haven't actually had to use it myself yet, <laughs> but um, it's a number you can call if somebody's on their own or too drunk or something when they're out at night, and somebody from the student union will drive a car around and come pick you up and take you home, and you don't have to pay for it. And yeah. it's, it's worth bearing in mind, obviously, you can be a bit worse away at night time, but also you could have... <laughs> been late in the library or you could uh, you know okay. there are lots of other options but it is a um it's a um a charitably funded independently run it's run by the students union um and it's a wonderful service to keep students safe bear in mind as well obviously it'll only pick you up within the ring road in oxford um i once tried to ring up while i was in london and they were having none of it so bear in mind um, we have the questions flooding in um i'm going to ask one uh, here again for the students. It says, um, I've heard that there is a lot of work to do uh, for a law course. Is there any time to do other stuff at uni as well? Yeah, yeah Lots definitely. Of nodding. <laughs> Absolutely. How do you plan your time accordingly so far? I mean, it's the same with your school life so far. You find a balance. But I mean, in terms of contact hours that we have in the first year at least, they're about nine hours a week. So we found, I think everyone was quite excited in the first year to find that we had a day off yeah. at the end of the week, which was nice. Um, but yeah, I think as long as you keep on top of the work that you've been given, it's not necessarily that you have to go further than that and overwork yourself. As long as you do what's required, then you have plenty of time to... Yeah. It's definitely not things. as scary as I thought it would be. Yeah, no, I think I, when everyone talks about a law degree, they say you're not going to have a life in uni <laughs> and, and you arrive and it's nowhere near as bad as you think it's going to be. Yeah. Excellent. There's a brilliant question here that's just said, uh, I think it's for students. What has stood out for you with both the course and the student experience? So far, almost one year in, what's been your favourite thing? Maybe Jack, if you could start. Um, I think what drew me to it and sort of has kept me interested was when I came for the open day, I was shown the moot room and was able to see a moot in progress. And I just think it was just brilliant. So I think that's what probably drew me to it. Um, what was the question? Sorry, I kind of... <laughs> what's stood out for what's you? What's stood out? Oh, most. Yeah. I think it's a combination of lots of different things. So you have to bear in mind where you are. So as Nisha said, that Oxford is a, a great place to be. But you've also got the sort of close-knit campus feel of the university as well and the combination of old and new. So you've got this brand new building, the JHB building, and that's fantastic. And then you, especially with law, you have the Headington Hill Hall, which is this massive manor house, which is pretty much law exclusive. So you have the two combinations, and I think that's probably what it was for me. You just mentioned the combination, uh, very convenient, because there was um, a question here um, about which accommodation is really good. Before you uh, answer, I'm going to throw my student ambassador hat and say that no accommodation at Brooks is made to be better or worse than others. Um, the accommodation at Brooks is aimed to suit an individual student's needs, um, and so that's why there's a variety of different accommodation. I understand that you two are in the same accommodation, and then yeah. Jack are in a different one. Yeah. So if you could talk briefly, maybe you two first, about your experiences in halls this year. Uh, well, we're both in Cheney, um, and so far it's been perfectly pleasant. Um, I definitely <laughs> recommend it in terms of studying law because it's so close to where law is taught. So you're yeah. literally out of bed in the morning and it's a two-second walk and you're at your classroom. So 
that's really handy. But other than that, it's that it's a lovely yeah. place to live. I think Cheney's really good as well because you are right on campus, and the sports bar and the sports center and the gym is a thirty second walk from my bedroom. Um, so it's perfect on like sunny days like this. You kind of come back from your lecture, do a bit of work, go see everyone at the sports bar. Um, and there's a big charity sports thing on at the minute. So there's, there's actual bouncy castles and total Wi-Fi <laughs> going on outside. So it's just, you kind of feel like you're really in the midst of it all. Yeah. yeah. We really do like hope it. it's as sunny where you are as it's <laughs> Jack, your experiences of home? Uh, yeah, it's perfectly pleasant. You have everything you need. Um, you have a bed, you have a toilet and a shower. So I, I can't <laughs> complain. And it is about a five minute walk for me um, up a hill. So yeah, I can't complain about it at all. It's everything you want you and it's close. No, I don't need the gym. No, I just go up the hill. It's fine. <laughs> Um, a quick question for the two academics, um, uh, which is, do law students have to do a dissertation? Thinking ahead of it, do law students have to they do They don't have to, but we do recommend it. It's not compulsory, um, okay. but it's an option that you can take in the third year. And one of the benefits of it is that you can choose a topic that really interests you. Um, it might be something you've always known you want to study, but you haven't been able to do through the um, course. It might be something that's not generally taught on undergraduate courses. Um, or it might be something that's really sparked your interest either through the mooting you've done or through um, another course. So if you might be studying criminal law, which is a compulsory subject, but have an area of criminal law that you want to do more detailed study on. So it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be something where you arrive at university knowing what you want to do your dissertation on. It might be something that you develop as you go. Um, one of the benefits is that the people supervising you in the dissertation will probably be somebody who's... Um, got a research interest in that subject area so we do it does enable us to match students with some of the research expertise that we've got within the department so it can be a really great option but if it terrifies you and you don't want to do it it's not compulsory you could take another course instead if you really so what would to. be the alternative um, uh, it counts as one of the options so it might be that you take instead any of the other options we offer in the third year so it might be that you take family law or employment law or quality law or okay. criminal evidence, anything. Um, um, it also enables you to specialise if you are thinking, I'd like to take, as Mark said earlier, if you think actually what I want to do is a um, commercial um, law as my specialism, then you can pick the specialist options and you might then be able to pick something even more specialised for your dissertation. So it enables you to study something that you haven't studied before or, or really specialise, depends on your choice. Excellent, yeah. And, and employers like it. I, I think that if you're, it's one thing to say that you've got a particular interest in, say, family law if you're applying to work for a family law firm but it's something else to say I've got a particular interest in family law and the evidence for this is the dissertation yeah. I did on, yeah. on, on this aspect of the law relating to children because of course then that will make your own, that will make your application stand out just as much as work experience will make it stand out it'll, and it'll give them something to talk about with you in an interview Definitely. Yeah, and so I, I think that you know, some people don't you know, like the idea they get a bit frightened by the idea of a dissertation but you've got a lot of time to do it you can carry out research it's a way you know, it's for students who like um, coursework based assessment. You know, it, it's almost a dream ticket in some yeah, ways, but it really is, and it really is. Take it takes up the research element, but it does feed into employability as well. Excellent. Another question for students here that's come in: uh, What is involved in a typical day as a student? Oh, typical day. Well, you get up. <laughs> Probably. That's a good start. A good start. <laughs> Probably get up. Um, they usually have a lecture, which uh, for law is about an hour. Up to two hours long maybe um, that's followed by maybe a break have some lunch and then we'd have a seminar in the afternoon or maybe straight after the lecture depending so the seminar you get sort of 20 people in a room get together and talk about what we discussed in the last lecture um, yeah and then studying <laughs> going out yeah. generally being a student kind of depends if you've got coursework deadlines yeah. or if yeah. you've got exams coming up or if it's pretty chilled at that time because kind of do it all but it all fits into your day. A follow-up question obviously um, law like a number of other um, subjects in humanities does not have a massive massive amount of contact hours per week um, so if you want to contact your lecturer if there's an emergency or if you just want to, to have a chat away from lectures how easy is it to do that? Oh, really? Very easy really? yeah. they all have office hours and you just go to their office and find them and it's in a really nice building. Oh, emails. <laughs> <and> <laughs> okay. yeah. Which is nice for you of course. We've had another question um, is it compulsory to be assessed practically? Um, well, it depends what we mean by practically. We, we actually have an entire module which is devoted to practical skills. Um, okay. It's not it's, a compulsory module. It's, it's an optional module, so yeah. you don't have to do okay. it. So, um, but that that's involves you know, pretending to be a solicitor, go, doing a client interview, and then doing advocacy. Um, quite a lot of students do it because they, they it feeds into the mooting and the other stuff that we do. Um, but there but are other practical, I mean, other practical, like ability to read a case, 
analyse a case and assess a case, for example, would yep. be um, a fairly practical skill for a lawyer, which is which is assessed in some of our compulsory modules. But I think that's that's like um, that may not be what the question means. If you mean if the questioner is meaning, do we have to stand up and do a presentation type practical skills? Then they're not compulsory, mm. okay. but there are quite practical aspects of what we teach. We've had another question here. Someone is worried. This is one for students. Um, are there a lot of ex exams in first year, and is it very stressful? I haven't actually done an exam yet. No. Um, we don't have any at Christmas, so I think that's quite nice to kind of ease you and you've got a bit longer before you have to sit an exam. Yeah, um, I mean, you have you have coursework to do yeah. before Christmas. So that's good at sort of giving you feedback and keeping you up to date on where yeah. you are. But in terms of exams, it's all in May. Yeah, I really like the structure of yeah, it. So. Okay, chat. Do you agree? Yeah, I think we only have four exams this summer, so it's no more, no less than you'll do at A level. So mm -hmm. it, the stress level, I guess. If you get stressed by exams, it's the same as you would experience at A-level, I think. So okay. there's no worse, I don't think, there. Excellent. Um, time is moving on very quickly. So we're going to talk about something I mentioned we were going to talk about earlier, which was uh, career opportunities. So from an academic point of view, what does the law department do to make sure that their graduates enter um, the best careers that they can? Well, we, we do, there are all kinds of things. I mean, we work with the Student Law Society um, in terms of getting sort of practitioners back to talk about um, very areas of work and, and that can often lead to sort of quite interesting discussions and sometimes lead to the sort of conversations that you know, inviting students to go and look for work experience. We've got the mentoring scheme in, in for barristers, we've got, we're going to be having the mentoring scheme for solicitors, we've got things like the law fair and of course when, when we get involved in the, the lawyer skills stuff, the, the courtroom looting and the, the client interviewing, we are working with members of the professions uh, in, in terms of doing that and, and allowing the students to have the opportunity to get work experience and make contact with with lawyers. So there are all these things which go on. Um, and, and of course there are aspects of the course where you know, students are, the students' employability skills are, are being developed. We're, we're really conscious of the fact that although law is inherently a fascinating academic subject, most of our students who come to do the course are also thinking about going to professions and that's why we keep such close links. Excellent. Um, just a quick mention or maybe even plug for the Central Career Service at Oxford Brooks. Um, what links do you have specifically with the Central Career Service? Well, they, they're keeping close contact with us and they've certainly come and um, advertised their availability to students in, in lectures and things. And I think and they, the um, contacts we've had, um, to me, show how excellent they are. They've got very good contacts. They're very good at helping students with um, how to make their applications, how to work with their CV as well as so g general careers advice as well and I think they're a really excellent team and they certainly have a lot of contacts with us and we're able to put our students in contact with them so students may come to us for very specific law related careers advice um, but the the general careers advice that's available is is really excellent. And it's worth pointing out as well that the uh, Careers Centre at Oxford Books follows you for your time as a student and then for three further years after you graduate. It's a remarkably good service, so please do bear that in mind. We've had another question we're going to try and squeeze in. This is for students. Um, two questions. One's uh, quite a quick one. Are, is teaching in big groups, small groups? Um, lectures, I think lecture theatre hold about 100 students, yeah. am I right? Yeah. Um, so obviously there's a big group of you. Uh, some of the lectures are interactive, but then it's obviously if you want to interact, you can. But then... Uh, seminars are much smaller groups, so you'd have like 20 students to one seminar leader, so you get a lot more sort of like one-on-one, one-on-one. -on -one. Some of the third year options which you haven't had a chance to check yeah. yet have been <laughs> smaller groups actually yeah. as well, so um, that just adds that in. And another one, what would you as students say to someone who's currently choosing to decide between Oxford Brooks and another university? Come to Oxford Brooks. Come to Oxford Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't laughs> it's really fun yeah. and friendly. Yeah. Don't consider anything else, come here and join the Law <laughs> Society. <laughs> Um, we're rapidly running out of time. We've got time. I think we'll end with um, the, the students because you've uh, um, given the time so uh, gladfully and um, <laughs> clearly enjoyed your first year. So can you just very quickly take it in turns um, to say what the best thing has been about studying law at Oxford Brooks so far, one year in? Sorry, putting you on the spot again. Oh, um, I think the relief, and that sounds funny, but it's... Um, worrying so much about it being really daunting and really huge and yeah. really sort of terrifying and a lot of work and then being pleasantly surprised by how comfortable I was straight away and how not easy the workload is but it's not what you're expecting it's a lot more comfortable okay sure. um I think I'm quite, just quite proud of myself I knew absolutely nothing about law before I came here nothing at all um and now I can talk to people and I actually have an idea <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah I 
agree with everything they said and also that the staff they'll really push you to if you have an interest in something they will really sort of help you get where you want to be and the I think my most enjoyable thing probably as I banged on about is the meeting <laughs> so yeah that's probably my Excellent. That's, I'm afraid, all we have time for. Thank you very much for to everyone who has tuned in and asked questions. If your question wasn't uh, answered, we haven't managed to answer it, or if you have any more queries about anything we've spoken about, then you can email the Law Department at law at brooks.ac.uk and you can also find more information at brooks.ac.uk, which is the main website. Um, please do continue to contact admissions with your admissions queries. They're open for another 15 minutes. Um, but other than that, it's a thank you from me for uh, tuning in. Thanks to our students, Emily, Nisha and Jack, and our academics, Lucy and Mark. And we hope to see you actually very soon. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Goodbye.